Hello, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. Uh, we are taking a little break from the quilt back that we worked on last night, and uh, we are going to work on uh, the zipper pouch instead that we started. It is my birthday today, so I figured we did a do what I wanted to do and work on the zipper pouch. Just wanted to, I always want to do this stuff, but like, it's that unfinished project that I just want to get done. So uh, that's what we're going to work on tonight. So thanks so much for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time uh, for about an hour. And we are just relaxing and crafting. So, all right, we uh, made this zipper a little bit longer uh, last week, or maybe it was even two weeks ago. I was showing you how you can make a zipper shorter or a zipper longer. This is our longer zipper uh, that we put some tabs on here, but I never finished the pouch, so I thought we'd just kind of work on that tonight. So let's go ahead and do that. So thanks for joining me. All right. Oh, thank you for the birthday wishes. All of y'all are very, very sweet. All right. <laughs> So, oh, I have the rest of the quilt up here. I actually laid it on the floor last night, and I kind of really liked it. Uh, it's growing on me. Uh, but tonight, I want to finish up this little guy. Um, so we're going to do this. I'm going to start out by actually pressing these. I don't think I've ever actually pressed them. <laughs> Should have done that right from the get-go. But then we have uh, that, that um, pocket that I wanted to put in. These have already been pressed, it looks like. Yeah, I'll press it. Just, I'll run the iron or just over this top. I think it just got a little smushed in travel. There, got that already again. Let's just press these fronts. Thanks for the birthday wishes. I had birthday pizza. John got me some birthday cupcakes, but I haven't had any of those yet because I ate a lot of birthday pizza. <laughs> We're letting that sit. All right, here is uh, the front here. And let's get this guy. This will be fun. I'm. Um, I'm excited to get this done. I'm actually using both my other zipper pouches that we made here. They're both in my larger bag, my computer bag, basically. Computer and iPad, all that, all my drawing stuff, all that stuff comes with me everywhere in a bag. My folder of stuff I'm working on, all of it. Um, so I like having, I have a bag for this light um, that I got and then a bag, like this light tripod thing. And then I got a bag for um, the first zipper pouch is for all like my computer cords and that sort of thing. So I'll have this nice and long one. I'm, I don't know what I'll do with this one yet, but it's really long. Like I feel like it'd be great for like um, painting stuff, kind of like paint, holding paint brushes or, or like knitting needles or something. I don't know if I have, I mean, I do have long knitting needles, but I have that kind of interchangeable set. So I'm not quite sure what I will use this for yet, but something. We'll get it. All right, so I've just grabbed one of my inner linings here and uh, my pocket. I think what I'm going to do is actually just fold them both in half. I'm going to just mark this bottom with just like just finger pressing it. There, I can see that fold. And I'm going to just do the same at the top here. And that's just how I'm going to center it. I don't think I need to do anything fancier than that. Just finger press the edge here. Oh, the link for the shop says, oh, dot, oh, um, I might have just typed it in wrong. So, Pam, I'll just uh, get rid of that E, and then it should be just penguinfish.com. Um, so, sorry about that. All right, I think, so I'm lining up the fold um, with the pocket here. And you know what? I think I'm going to throw a pin in here, a couple pins in here too, just to um, keep it kind of aligned. So I didn't really do anything to align the bottom edge, but as long as that fold matches there and the fold matches there, we should be pretty close. And it looks pretty good. I, I put it a little lower down. I mean, we will have another quarter inch seam that goes away. 
So it's not all the way at the bottom, but it's, it's kind of low in there. I think this is fine. You can position it however you want. So I'm just gonna throw a pin in the middle here because I'm gonna sew around it. So I can just leave these pins in as I sew if I don't put them on the edge. Um, and I'm gonna put another one right there. I was thinking, so I just thought of this, so. <laughs> so I haven't told Jenna, uh, but, um, so I'll have to tell her tomorrow. But I think uh, I'm gonna do a thing if for during the show and the rest of the evening here, um, if you buy a kit, I will throw in an extra little like birthday surprise in in the package. So all kits purchased for the rest of the evening here will have some fun bonus that we'll we'll pick out for for you tomorrow. Um, so I think we're gonna do that, and uh, I'll I'll remind you towards the end of this too. But I think that'll be kind of fun. All right, so um, we got our pocket. Uh, pinned here. So I'm going to just sew along these three edges. So remember, I still have an open edge here. I'm, I've, I've pressed it, uh, but the sewing this bottom edge is what's going to keep that shut. And we've also already top stitched this edge. Let me pick it up so you guys can see a little bit more. So right there, we've already top stitched one edge. And top stitching is just like that visible extra row of stitching. Uh, and that's, we're doing, gonna do that more when we sew the rest of the piece, but that just gives it a nice finished edge. It holds everything together as well. And we needed to pre-finish this because it's open there. Um, we need that done now. Uh, and then we're gonna sew this on. So I think we're just going to do a little back tack. I'm not gonna get special and do, you could do like a little, a little triangle here that would make it a little more sturdy, but what am I gonna put in here that I need it that sturdy? So I'm just gonna do a little, forward and backward stitch to hold it in place. Then I'm just gonna go all the way around, another forward and back stitch um, here, and then call it a day and we'll have a pocket. And after this pocket, all we gotta do is sew it up just like how we've been sewing all the other ones up. If you end up getting a kit, um, let me know, uh, let me know which one you got. All right. Oh, and you guys, I found my stiletto, so we'll be we'll be using that again tonight. I was like, oh no, my pretty stiletto, where did it go? I I had put it in my travel uh, embroidery kit. I have like a little, not embroidery kit, uh, my travel craft kit. I have a little um, like Ziploc, what are those little plastic containers that I've had forever, and I. I sometimes not all the time I bring it on vacations and stuff just so I have you know needles or whatever I might need in there and I just never uh, unpacked it and I had put my little stiletto in there so I'm very happy I missed him so much yep any embroidery kits um, I don't know like I said I'm totally making it up now but I, I any embroidery kit you guys get or anyone um, this evening um, you know, more tomorrow morning. However it works out, we will add a special little birthday bonus gift in there. And we'll, we'll mail it out tomorrow for you. All right. Rotate. So it's basically like a, a free gift with purchase. And, um... You don't have to put anything special in the, um, like, an, you don't have to put anything, like, any coupon or anything like that in. We'll know. <laughs> so we'll we'll know the orders that uh, come in this evening. So we'll, we'll just throw that in for you. All right, so I've just sewn shut that bottom, which is great exactly what we wanted. All right, and... Oh, the postage cost to Australia. So, uh, Jennifer, if you're talking about, like, for a kit, um, 
you can, we have a, a postage estimator, so you can, uh, hopefully that works, I think it works internationally. So if you put something, I think it's if you put something in the cart, um, then, then, uh, um, then I think there's a calculator underneath there. So you can put in country and um, all the province, everything else. Yep, uh, Tracy, correct. I am not sewing a quarter inch here. I'm just basically doing a sixteenth of an inch. I'll show you what it looks like in a sec here. So this is all visible. Um, you know, I will. You'll see the stitching. It's not like we're turning it right side out or anything like that. Um, so it's like a flat, visible stitch. It's basically a top stitch. Um, so let's snip. I'll show you close up here. Okay, so I, I still have the pins in, but we have just gone around. We started here, so just a tiny bit in, just about the same amount that I did for the top stitching of the top. Yeah, maybe a little bit more just because I wasn't very accurate, but yeah, an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch in um, right here is where it closed the gap. You'll definitely um, need it less than a quarter of an inch if you're wanting to close the gap. So this sixteenth of an inch, just kind of right on the edge of um, my my foot, the inside of the foot is where I did it. But yeah, so we've gone all the way around. It kind of actually looks like it goes all the way around because we did that top stitching first, but we have a, a pocket here now. So I'm gonna remove those pins and let's trim, trim these up. I'm gonna actually trim the front. And then we can pull those little extra threads to the back. So I'm just gonna like pop it to the back. There we go. Then we won't have that little thread sitting on the front. There we are. Okay, so we got ourselves a pocket. So I think that's gonna work great. This is kind of a, a big size, but for crap, I mean like, look at this, kapow valid pocket <laughs> so this is totally gonna work for a craft bag like a, if this was like knitting and I had like knitting needles this would be just the right size for that I'd throw a scissors in there maybe some stitch markers or something like that um, oh this would might be good for like a four inch embroidery kit and some other supplies uh, you know what that's actually probably what this is gonna end up being is a, a craft bag a project bag I love these zipper pouches and you saw that with the um, my um, this guy here Still have it over here, my my fabric only uh, zipper pouch here. This is just this is my um, my hand quilting kind of project bag. Uh, I do like these zipper pouches for that, especially I mean the zipper. You know it's secure in there then. All right, we are just basically at this point going to go through the process of a zipper pouch. So it's the same it's the same process that we did for the all the other ones lately. Uh, well, let's start with this one since we got it here already. So I have my lining piece. Uh, you want it facing upward so you can see the, the pocket here. We are also like, so the right side up. Um, I'm gonna put the zipper. So now remember we put these zipper tabs to lengthen, lengthen it. Cause this was just a nine inch zipper and we needed it like, I don't know, 13 inches or something. Ah, this might be actually longer than that. Um, so we're gonna place that face up as well. So we had, uh, um, normally we would just have the zipper and go to the end of the zipper, but we're going to just keep keep stitching. I suppose I could kind of fold this and have to center it, but I think I'm going to just kind of estimate my, my um, I made the tabs just a hair bigger. Um, so I'm just going to kind of center that and call it, call it a day. But you could fold it in half and um, center it on the line like what we did earlier. And then the front, first I gotta figure out what I want the top. So this has all my stitching from earlier. I'm gonna make that, because this is a block that I basically unstitched. I um, seam ripped. So these were actually together. This was an old block. I seam ripped it and got my two pieces from that. I'm The part that I seam ripped, I'm gonna have be the bottom, just in case you can see that. So this is gonna be my top. So I'm gonna put uh, the right side down. So, uh, Lining up, zipper up, um, front facing down. All right, I'm gonna just rotate it so I can clip these easier. I don't know why I always do that upside down like that. All right, let's grab some clips and uh, get this together. So I want the edge of the lining and the, oops, <laughs> I'm trying to get it out of a closed thing here. 
uh, I want the edges matching, so I'm gonna just, I haven't been matching those very well, so I'm gonna pin or clip those first, I think. Let's just get, let's get the, just get the edges. And actually this might be a hair bigger than the rest of it, so this might just not match up. We've been pretty willy-nilly with, um, cutting, <laughs> cutting this project. You want to be more exact, getting the, um, lining and front the same, but, ah uh, well. All right, I'm gonna pin in the middle. So I got all three layers now. I got the lining, the zipper, and the zipper, or the uh, front. And I'm just gonna kinda go down the line here. Um, I am gonna kinda move the zipper hair out of the way. Uh, just, I'm gonna just open it a little so I can start and um, kinda get a feel for it before moving. I'm, I'm gonna eventually move that zipper out of out of the way because it's too bulky to sew around. So I'll have to sew a little bit and then stop and then move it out of the way. All right, trying to match, match this up. It's being a little funny. Oh man, Carla says, happy birthday. Thank you very much. I'm working on my raccoon embroidery. He's cuter than the raccoon that was on my deck in Maryland. Oh my gosh. Crazy. Little raccoonies. All right, I'm not lining this up very well. All right, this front piece is definitely a hair bigger, so we're gonna just let it be a little bit bigger. We can maybe trim it down later so it's more equal to the lining. Or not, we'll see. Okay, that side, let's just uh, meander down this side as well. That zipper wants to curve a little bit, so I want to make sure I got the lining here. Just a reminder, if you're just popping in, uh, I have decided on a whim here to do a little special birthday uh, thing. If anyone who buys any kit, any embroidery kits um, tonight, um, you know, now or after my scope or maybe even a little in the morning, uh, we will put a little extra something special, a little birthday surprise in, in your order and we'll ship it out tomorrow. We'll pick out some fun birthday stuff for that. All right, so I'm, I'm all clipped up. So all I'm gonna do is sew down the edge now However, we we don't um, we don't have a zipper right here, right? So I don't have uh, that bump of the zipper coil to kind of see where to sew. So I think I'm gonna just put my uh, presser foot down here where it will go and just kind of see how far away from the edge I am. Because I want to mimic that. I want to pretend the zipper has gone all the way to the end. So I'm going to uh, go a little in, but I want to see where that should be. I'm again not using a zipper foot um, only because I am on my machine that I have no zipper foot for. So I'm going to have Oh, did I say scope? Oh my gosh, that's funny, Amy. <laughs> I still call it a, a scope from back in the periscope days. I still, like, when we talk about it, I, I call it the scope every once in a while. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so my face, my the live stream is what I'm referring to when I say scope. Uh, all right. <laughs> but uh, I, I without the zipper foot, I can't get right up against the zipper. Like I can't just get my needle right up against it because I have the rest of that foot in the way. The zipper foot, you get rid of that, that so you're, you're right there. Um, so you will see a little bit more of my zipper when we're done here. But I actually kind of like that, especially when I'm using these bright, poppy, um, fun colored zippers, which I think I am, I'm gonna find a bunch of those and we'll do this again sometime, make some, zippery yumminess um, and uh, so I'll have some zippers I'll get some zippers for the shop too some colorful and maybe some maybe I can find some like cute polka dot ones like the other one all right so again I'm just kind of testing this all right so you can kind of see there's the zipper right there I'm right up against it so that's where I want to sew all right I'm about halfway in between this foot so that's what I'm going to aim for when I'm up here and then once I hit the zipper I should be in a decent spot that's all I wanted to see. All 
Uh, like so. And I'm gonna just back tack it as well. I just like doing that backward stitch. I know some machines, if you stitch that, like modern machines, it'll all be like secure and locked, but if I just did a straight stitch and I pulled on that a little, it would it would kind of come out, I think. Okay, I think I feel the zipper approaching here, so we should be real near it. Yeah, we should just be able to slide up right against it. Yep, I can feel it now. All right, we're also approaching, I'm gonna stop right there with my needle down. We're approaching the zipper pull. So I'm gonna get that out of the way so you can see it right, right there. I'm gonna just try and shimmy sham it up past the zipper foot. Uh, if you can't get it past the zipper foot, just take the whole, your whole piece off, then slide it up and then just start up fresh again. That's totally valid, but there, now it's out of the way and I can just keep, keep sewing. Quite in line here. I am just trying to get alongside that zipper. So the zipper is the same, the width from the zipper coil to um, where the fabric starts. I'm trying to get that to be consistent, so I'm just keeping it, my foot right up against there. All right, and the end of it is right here, so I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of continue as if it's still there. So I'm trying to keep the same width there. All right, and I think that, oops, let's back, back tack it. There we go, I almost forgot. All right, let's check it out. bits. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Flip that up and we're just kind of turning it inside out basically. So just flipped it around. So where where the um, where these two sides were together, now I'm gonna put the wrong sides together basically and that zipper will be in the middle of it. So I think I'm gonna top stitch this now. So before, when I did the other pouch, I sewed the other side on right away, but I do actually kind of like pressing it and top stitching it first. I think it makes it nice and clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of realign these bottom edges here. Get my iron going. I suppose that doesn't matter so much. Then up here, I'm gonna just kind of pull on this, uh, kind of finger press. Um, Let's go this direction. So see how it kind of bubbles up still, like how it, it it's poofy there? We're gonna top stitch that just how we did the um, that top of that of the um, of the pocket here. You know, the top of that pocket where we just put a line of stitches right on the edge. We're gonna do that same thing here, and that's gonna hold the front and uh, or the front and the inside together and uh, then it won't flop around as much anymore and we won't get it caught. So first I wanna press it. Just kinda of press all those layers down. Just so I'll start at the zipper. So I just wanna make sure that the back is, the lining is kinda of pulled to there. And same thing here. All right, let's get it here. Just kinda of trying to pull those two sides. So I don't think I need to clip these or anything. I think it's fine as is. Let's let's just get the front or the back again. Lining again, I mean. All right, flip it around. Make sure that I'm just have pushed all these seams down decent enough. I think we are fairly good there. Okay, let's uh, let's do that top stitching. 
So here I might just trim, see how you can see the edges aren't perfect together there. I, might, I may trim that, but I might just leave it too, who cares. All right, let's, uh, let's go. I'm gonna sew from there, just like a 16th of an inch in or so. Ooh, you guys, we just had a little flicker in here. I don't know if you just saw that. Um, it is raining, so hopefully we don't get a power outage or something. Oh, Arloa! Arloa says this is a different way to do a zipper, learning something new. There are so many ways to do zippers. Um, it really is kind of fun. And it's always, it's like one of those like mysteries of sewing, right? How to do a zipper. Uh, and then once you, you do, you do it, then it's like, okay, now I get what a zipper foot does and, and how this all works. So I'm just going right on the inner edge of this foot, which is about, I don't know, 16th of an inch or so will do. And again, we are just holding all of this fabric down to one side. And this just makes a really nice finished edge too. Whoa, can't get through there. That is a thick seam. Let's get the stiletto. Yeah, I'm just kind of forced pulled it a little bit with the stiletto there, just to make it over that seam. So yeah, this, this block, I mean, this is just an old block that I had laying around. So it's got its own little issues, like a zillion seams. I think we're gonna have another one here. So I'm just gonna get my uh, stiletto prepped. Ooh, nothing, that, that was easy. All right, my, this guy is probably not gonna be in the way, but I'm gonna move him anyway. Let's just shimmy him completely out of the way. There we go. I think he would have been fine, but. Ooh, more seams. Okay, and like I said, you could do both sides. We're gonna, I'll show you how to do the next side coming up here, but you could do both of those first before pressing and top stitching, but I kinda, and if, if you have to change feet and all that, then I would wait, but I, for some reason, I like this, having this side finished before moving on. Just keeps things out of the way and keeps it all clean and nice. All right, so there is basically the front and then the inside of the lining. This is still the side with the, the pocket. All right, let's close this up for a moment and uh, let's do side number two. Oh, but then you can see like now, now everything's being totally held in place from, from that top stitching. So it's all real nice now. Okay, we're gonna start on the lining again. So we got, oh, did I even put those right side up? Oh, I did. <laughs> so this is a good thing. Oh, I guess this isn't really directional fabric. Um, but if you do have directional fabric, um, and that's fabric where, like for example, if you just look at this row, all these zebras are going in the same direction. Um, if you have a pattern, oh, here's, this is a better example. So all of these animals are going all in the same direction um, versus like, these animals that kind of go in different directions all over the place. This is non-directional or tossed. And this is directional. Like if you hold this upside down, it will look upside down. Whereas the other one, it wouldn't. Um, if you are using directional fabric where there isn't up, make sure the top, like the where the characters, like where their heads would be, like go the, the upright, the, the top of the fabric, is towards the zipper in in the lining case and the the front case now this doesn't matter this this front and this zebra doesn't really matter either but this top row because it, it switches like now they're upside down and then they're up right side up but i you know theoretically it's nice having the right side up ones first so let's see what we got here oh these are all just kind of upside down like right they're upside down either way so maybe we'll go this way because these guys will be in the seam allowance. So then this row would be right side up. Let's do it like that. So those guys will be, and I could have fussy cut this too, but we're not doing that. All right, lining up. Then the zipper is also up. So you kind of have to imagine as if it doesn't have any of this stuff. It's just like how we did before. The zipper is up. It'll be on the other side now that, that the pull, but in general. It's the same. Let's kind of center that again. I'm centering it, but you can also just line it up with the other lining piece. That's that's really what I want to do. There we go. That feels good. 
and then right side down on the zipper. Again, ignore all, all the stuff that we already did. Just think of it as lining up, zipper up, and then um, this up. So how do we want to do this? Oh yeah, I did the, um, I wanted that part that I seam ripped. I want that, wanted that to be at the bottom. So this will be our up. So we're lining those three edges. This is gonna just totally stretch too. All right, and then let's clip it all up and we will sew that just like how we did the other side. Grab all my little clippies from before. Start in the middle here. Oh, Kimberly uh, picked up a quilt from her long armor today. That's awesome. A long armor, if, if you haven't heard that, that's um, a, a long arm quilting machine are, are like huge sewing machines that you can, it's actually the mo sewing machine isn't super gigantic, it's the frame. So you can put a whole quilt on this frame and uh, um, then sew like all the quilting on this frame. So it's more free moving. Um, and a lot of people uh, send them to long arm quilters to, to quilt their quilt because it's tough to quilt on a home machine sometimes. Um, and if that's not your favorite thing to do, send it out and it just gets done. Uh, so it's kind of awesome. Uh, but that's great. So you got that back from the long armor. Another quilt nearly done. That's got to feel amazing. Amazing, amazing. All right, I think we're fine there. The stop, I mean, there's so many seams and they're on diagonals, which is extra stretchy. So this is just like a stretchy fabric. Um, you know, we haven't talked about linings or, or like, like interfacing or like, um, you know, using foam or anything like that to make these bags sturdier. We're just kind of sticking to like the basic, um, basic bag. I mean, at some point we could dig even deeper. Um, but for now, I'm going to open this again a little bit. Yeah, nah, I'm going to leave it for now. Um, so this might be one, since it is stretchy, one that maybe would have been good if I uh, put some interfacing in there to kind of hold it more solid. But, you know, we're just doing a cute little zipper pouch. I don't need all that. But it would add some sturdiness to it, which is nice. Um, having that, like, foam lining, that sort of stuff, or uh, interface is nice, especially for those boxed corner ones, because then they can like stand up on their own really well. Uh, all that. So I'm gonna just assume that it's about that halfway point again in my foot. Ooh, come on, there we go. There. All right, so the, the zipper starts about right there. All right, now this side should start to feel the zipper. Yep, now, now I'm against the zipper. And there's tons and tons of tips and tricks for this stuff too. Uh, like there's, there's ways to, you know, get this even cleaner and prettier and um, get the tabs so they, um, don't bend in or like if you want the tabs the zipper tabs out there I mean, there's just oodles and oodles of ways to play around with bags and zippers and all that again This is this is like this the tiny tiny step up from that most basic um, Zipper pouch with a lining that we did um, a couple weeks ago You know, we just upgraded this one with a extending the zipper to make a longer pouch and also with that little pocket on the inside, but once you dig in, there's you'll start to see there's just zillions and zillions and zillions of things you can do um, with these zipper pouches and bags and stuff. And they're just fun. They're such quick little projects and um, great for gifts, great for everything. So I'm just taking that zipper pull again that's hiding in here and moving it out of my way because it's too fat for me to sew around. I'll, I'll end up with like a big squiggle. So I'm just gonna shimmy shim it out of the way. Make sure that your um, needle is down when you do this. Ugh, okay, he does not want to go. Oh, I think I might have caught the fabric in it. Let's dig underneath here. Ugh, okay. 
This might be one where I take it off the machine. Let's try and really pull it. There we go. Got it through. Oh, that's the most annoying part of this. Moving that dang zipper out of the way. Oops. Alright. Oh, there's the end right there. And I think I need to line up these ends a little bit again. I think they're getting away from me. Alright. Now I'm just through the fabric. I'm just trying to keep that same distance, pretty much. All right, let's back tack a little and forward. Uh oh. Uh oh! I thought it looked funny. We are out of bobbin, folks. <laughs> let's see, right here. So in the middle, or so. Let's let me put a clip on here so it doesn't. So this. These are all stuck together. I think we did actually wind another bobbin. I was curious if that was going to happen sometime soon because we've been working on all that quilting. Um, let's just snip that. Take care of this. Okay, popping that. Um, this is what my uh, bobbin case looks like for this machine. And sure enough. All right. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so this one doesn't have a lot on, but it has enough on. Um, so we'll we'll have to switch that. We'll have to wind a whole pile of more bobbins again later. Okay, down and up. Gosh, remember that first time that I tried to figure out this bobbin? This is a different style of bobbin case than my um, other machine. It took me like 20 minutes to figure out how the heck to get that back in there. And the, the key was that the the direction like the the thread coming over the top towards me um, is opposite than my other bob and I, I go over the top away from me with the with it but once I figured that out then I was like oh well now this all just comes together all right so that was quick quick and easy so I'm gonna just okay the zipper is way up here now which is great it's out of my way I'm gonna even move it up more don't need him in my way anymore. So I'm going to just kind of go back a little. <laughs> it's a little annoying because, you know, we want the zipper to be all lined up and pretty, but I'm just gonna, oops, go back a little farther. I'm gonna, where the heck? Oh, right here. The holes, like this looks like it's not sewn, but it is. So I'm going right up against that zipper again, and we're just gonna go forward and backwards a, a teeny bit. And start up like it wasn't a problem. And hopefully you won't be able to tell on the front. That'll be the trick. All right, we're to the end again. All right, good enough. <laughs> it's nice when we can do those quick changes. That's that's what you can do when you have um, have uh, spares around. I don't always have spares. All right, let's get those squiggles in the middle too. There we are. Okay, we should be able to press this open again. So again, we're gonna kind of flop that side up and then we'll flop that lining side up too. You can actually just take this, shake it. And there we go. Now we have the zipper in the middle. And you can see our tabs are extended here. That's looking really nice. If we flip it around, there's our two lining pieces. So now I want to press these and then top stitch it so it's nice and secure like um, this other side that we already did. It's coming along. I'm going to do this shut first, though, just because I think everything's nice and square. All right, pressing, pressing all of this. Just trying to pull the lining and that top down. So there's a nice fold on both sides, and we'll, we'll check on that, too. Zipper pull always in the way. All right, 
right, I think that looks good. Let's um, just get the back for sure, and then we'll top stitch. It's looking cute. I'm glad that these ended up um, opposite each other, like this little green, these green circles and these white circles. Um, it's kind of like the block was never taken apart at this time. <laughs> we just threw a zipper in the middle. Kind of fun. All right. Again, just kind of pushing these seams down before I go ahead and top stitch the whole thing. Okay, I think that's good. So top stitching. Um, we'll start up here this time. We'll move the zipper. I think I'll, oop, let's get this little thread. Let's look at it now. Um, I'm gonna move this down a little bit out of my way and then we'll move it up once I've sewn that far. All right, all these clips, all y'all gotta get out of my way here. Stiletto, you can stay. Make sure I almost um, sewed with this one over there. Make sure that that other lining stays out of the way. It should just be this side that we're concerned with. A uh, extension table would be really nice here. Uh, that's an extension table is basically a um, um, just like an acrylic table that you can um, put around your sewing machine like it's built to go around your sewing machine I actually have an adjustable one so I can use it with a bunch of sewing machines um, I really like it uh, but that that would be nice for these bags because then I wouldn't have all this hanging over I could make sure that this is flat while I sew uh, that would that would make this a little bit easier but this is fine too it's totally working still Ooh, so another spot full of seams that's tough for the machine to get through. This is going to be one too, I suspect. There we go. All right, now I'm going to, with the needle down, I'm going to just get this guy out of the way. It's easier to sew with the zipper closed. Um, that's why I keep going back and forth with it. So now if you had a zipper foot, the fabric would have gone all the way up to the edge of the zipper. Um, since I don't have the zipper foot, that's why I have this big width here. So that's probably... Quilt Police wouldn't like that, um, but I think it's pretty with that extra color. With a fun zipper like this. I did do use a zipper um, foot for the one that I made at my parents' house last week. That was on Friday. That... Ooh, come on. That one I... Did get right up against the zipper, so that was kind of fun. Okay. All right, we have our nice little top going here. Trim this. So we are at the next stage of this. Uh, I think I might just give it a little press to make find a little shimmy sham out of these. All right, didn't really need to press now, but it looks so pretty like this. I like it. Uh, okay, so now is where we kind of flip it all weird again. Um, but again, the most absolute imp important thing when you get this far, please don't forget this. You'll only forget it once because it's super annoying. Um, open the zipper. So I'm opening it all the way just because I do have these tabs. But if you um, if you're sewing to the end of the zipper, just just open it enough enough that you can at least get a good hand through there. Um, but this is a big uh, bummer if you don't open this at this point. We need that open so we can turn it um, right side out later. Um, otherwise, it's a big pain. <laughs> so, all right, I'm, I have it open all the way. Uh, now we're gonna do this like kind of weird, like origami thing again, where we change from the plane we are in now. So I'm going to put, I'm gonna take the um, the right sides of the of the um, fronts. So the two fronts I'm gonna pull together. 
so that the right sides are facing. And then the two linings I'm going to pull together too, and I can actually just lift it up and they will fall together. So you kind of have like this, you have the linings on one side and the, um, the fronts on the other. And uh, so then we have like this inch or so space, like the thickness of a zipper in the middle. Uh, what we want to do there, that's what we're going to address first. We want to, it's a little funny with, um, with these, uh, zipper pulls in here. I want to point, how do we do that? We pointed the feet towards the edges. Okay, yeah, so uh, you're gonna actually squish this down. So you have this inch of fabric here, you're gonna squish it. So I'm actually going to kind of bend it so it arcs um, on this side and basically the edges of the zipper would have been down on this side. So. You can see it like that. So the the bump, the fold goes towards the front and the edges go towards the lining. So we've just folded it. Let's get those seams as close to each other as we can. Get this nice and flat and throw a clip in there. Let's hold that in place. Ugh, I'm not quite there yet. There we go. There. Okay, same thing on the other side. We can we'll loop it out towards the, like the, the arc towards, the fold towards the um, outer pieces and the, the legs, the edges, folded down towards the lining there like so. Boop. Okay, and uh, um, we don't have to worry about it being loopy in the middle, that's fine. All we needed it to, it to be is flat when we sew around the edge. That's that's it. So, all right, we are going to now uh, pin the rest of this, but what we're, what we're gonna do is actually leave uh, a little bit of the bottom open because we're gonna, we're gonna sew around this whole thing and then turn it right side out, uh, like a stuffed animal, sort of. You sew it backwards and then you turn it right side out. Uh, so I'm going to leave a little space here at the bottom. Let's line up our lining and I'm going to throw just two clips on both sides here. Just the two clips is my, hey, don't go past this point reminder. And on that other, that other, um, bag that we made, that really tall bag, I actually did this on the side, so like right here, just because it was so long and we were going to do those boxed corners, so I didn't want them in the way at my little base that I had on that one. But this one, I'm just going to leave that spot open. All right, and then let's just clip the rest of this together. I think we'll get one right kind of where this meets. Let's get that flat. Okay, let's do this side. Okay, it's right there. This is also a good time if you have a label, um, get that label in. Ooh, I actually do have a label. Let's let's throw one of these in. Um, so I got my little labels. Uh, I want again the it, the upper part. Anything that's um, up that I want up, I'm pointing it towards the the zipper. So if I wanted this on the front, like hanging out the front, I would put it this way so the heads are going towards the zipper. But I want it on the inside, so I'm gonna put the heads this way. So let's flip it like so. Let's put it. I'm gonna put it right here. So it'll, it's just gonna hang out in the side of the pouch. Maybe I'll put it a little higher. I suppose it doesn't really matter. We'll put it in line with um, the bottom pocket here. We'll go right there. That'll do. Great. Okay, so that's that. And now we gotta do the same thing on the other side. We are almost as done here, you guys. I know we're running out of time here, but I think we're gonna we're gonna get this still. Okay, same thing. Let's line up these edges and just clip them all down. So now this one we're not leaving a hole. We're going all the way across. one in the middle down here and that should be fine. Okay, all we gotta do is sew along that edge, starting um, here and ending here at our second um, bit 
a second um, double here where we're leaving that hole open. I'll probably make that actually a little bit bigger. That's pretty small to get my hand through. Uh, and then we just have to pay attention right here. We are fully going through all these layers that we squished together. That's the only um, other thing. It actually should be a little bit easier with our fabric um, that length, how the, our fabric tabs that we lengthen the zipper with um, versus folding the zipper. Um, all right, let's do it. Uh, after this, we will flip it right side out. We'll get all the edges nice. And then we'll still actually have to sew this lining down or the, the hole, the, this will, you know, we have this hole that we're leaving. We're gonna have to actually sew that shut. Um, so we'll do that and then, then we'll be just about done. Might be able to get that done in nine minutes. We'll see. All right, I'm gonna rotate. So I'm just gonna lift up the needle down. I could have probably gotten one more stitch or so, but whatever. It's okay if the lining's a little bit smaller. I don't mind that. All right, just readjusting. Again, this would be nice with the extension table. All right, so I'm approaching this area now. I'm gonna just move that and let's just get the stiletto to help hold it in place for me. There, I'm going over it. And we're just gonna keep going. Uh, the presser foot is gonna be angry because we're going from one height to another, but it'll it'll do its job still. That can be the tricky part going over those um, bumps there, but I think I think we're fine. All right, turn. So now here's that edge that I seam ripped. I'm, I'm gonna kind of try and get right on there or just to the left of it so you can't see those holes when I'm done. I didn't think of that till just now. So at the beginning, you might see a little bit of those holes, but I think we're getting it. Oh, and I, I guess I don't know where those holes are on the back, but probably in the same, same spot or so. and then a little bit of the other one, and then we're done. Yeah, I keep, I have so much fabric on the left here. It's kind of like sewing a big block together. Um, it'd be nice. Uh, I should have got my uh, glove out to hold everything in place. Oops, get underneath there. There we go. All right, here's our bump. Yeah, much easier with just the fabric there than the zipper. Much, much easier. All right, I think this down here is also our um, tag that we put in there. Oops, got a little far from the edge there. All right, last little hair here. There's our ends. Um, it stops about here, so that's plenty big. I'm actually gonna go in there a little bit. Yeah, we'll go right like there. You out of there. Okay. All right. Take the scissors, take that off. All right, so I'm going to quickly just snip the ends or the corners off. Uh, that'll reduce some bulk when we turn this right side out. I'm not going all the way to the to the sewing line, but I'm I'm you know sixteenth of an inch away or so. Okay, now 
we turn it right side out, um, going through the bottom here, the hole, and this is why we needed that zipper open, so I could get my hand all the way here on this side. So I'm just grabbing the whole thing. Let's pull it back through the zipper, through the hole. So now if you've used a line, or a, um, interfacing or something like that, this will be a little trickier than just the fabric, like what, what we're doing, but, um, should be relatively easy still. Let's push out these corners. This is going to be a nice wide zipper pouch. Um, I even like uh, getting my hemostat guy in here. Uh, that's that to like grip things. Um, it's It doesn't have a pointy edge at all so I actually like using it just to push out those edges um, that, that um, point even more. And then I actually kind of like drawing it along the the seam. I feel like that kind of, it's almost like finger presses the seam. All right, we got this little area up here to turn right side out. Okay, that's where our fabric tabs are. So these will be a little bunchy here. There's, there's other ways to do these tabs that it's not quite as bunchy, but it's fine. This is easier and, and quicker, I think. We can dig, out, dig those out a little bit more too. I think that's totally fine, just like so. All right, let's just go along the bottom here. This doesn't have to be perfect. Just kinda here to get that point out. fabric tabbies out as much as I can. I mean, we've connected them by folding them in half, so I think um, it's going to be a little sewn together. It's going to have like that little beak to it. But again, there's other ways to do this. This is just a quick way that I like doing it. All right, so we still have the lining here. I'm not gonna worry about getting those corners out so much because we're actually gonna push this in back in, but I do want it far enough away um, from the hole because we are gonna sew this shut quick. So I'm gonna find the opening of the hole, like the edge of the sewing. And when I get to both of those, I'm just gonna kind of pull it and roll the edges in a little bit. You could even press this if you wanted, but it should just kind of stay in place a little bit. So I'm actually gonna even just start sewing right before this point and then I'll stretch it out on the machine and fold it in and then um, that will hold this shut. So it's just kind of like how we sewed um, the bottom of the pocket shut just by going on top. So it'll be a little bit different stitching than the base. If you wanted to get really fancy, you could um, to have it like look the same as the edge, you could hand stitch this shut, but I think it's totally fine just doing this. And actually, I'm gonna get a little bit further in. I just did like a 16th of an inch. I wanna do a little bit more than that just to make sure that I get the edge. All right, with my needle down, I'm just gonna kind of straighten out here, grab this other end. I'm just gonna kind of hold it there. Make sure that both these edges are curved in. And if I just pull tight, they'll kind of stay in place. All right, now let's just sew along that edge all the way to where they're together, which is all the way up here. I think about right there, yeah. Okay, like so. I think we're past it now. Back tack. Forward. All right, let's trim. Uh oh, there we are. Trim these little fuzzles. I'll just get right up there. Trimming the ends. Oops, I missed. There we go. Let's get these ones. Okay, now all we have to do is push that lining to the inside. So we're kind of turning it inside out again. Now I can kind of push those corners down, 
push it down on this side. On some fancy bags, you can actually tack the corners to the bottom, but I don't think there's a need to do that with just these little zipper pouches. Let's poof up these corners again. There we go! Pretty cute! So there we are! <laughs> Little zipper pouch. Again, it, it's kind of funny. It's not super long in the middle here, the zipper, because we just we did start with that smaller zipper and extend it. But this is cute. I think this is a nice little um, bag. So we could we could um, press this, like we could pull this straight down, like get the seam really nice and press it if we wanted. But I think it's fine as is. I'm gonna just I'm gonna be actively using this, so it's gonna go wherever it wants. Let's just peek at that pocket yep there we go there's our our little pocket in there perfect for like a zipper or something and um we even have our label our label uh, all the way down in there so little hidden hidden label there okay you guys and that's it and uh, um i'll have to put a little cute pom-pom on here as well just to just see what they might look like again i have these pom-poms oh let's let's see what the orange one would look like Ooh, actually, let's see. <laughs> I have all these pom-poms that we, we made before. Let's see what this cute, like, rainbowy one would look like. So it'd be fun to just tie tie that to there, and then you'd have, like, this little pom-pom with it, too. Oh, ah, it'd be so sweet. Uh, that's not going to work for me if I'm pulling it in and out of my bag, my bigger bag, all the time. But there we go. Cute. All right, you guys. So here we are. It is big, you know, I mean, it's it's a fun size for sure. But I think, like I said, I think it'd be a perfect project bag. This with a ball of yarn would fit in here. Just, it is a perfect little craft project bag for sure. And that's probably exactly what it's going to end up for me here. Um, so awesome. So thanks for joining me for this little birthday so along here uh, and thanks for all the wonderful birthday wishes again I just uh, we're gonna do a fun little thing so uh, for the rest of the evening and maybe into the morning a little bit if you purchase any kit from penguinandfish.com uh, we will throw in a special little birthday gift into that and we'll ship it out tomorrow for you so that uh, you don't there's no code or anything needed we'll just know uh, based on you know when the sale happened the time that you know it was during this time so uh thank you guys so much again and uh, again thanks for the birthday wishes and i will see you tomorrow when we uh, work on our back of our granny square quilt again so thank you have a wonderful evening good night <laughs>